Well, let's move to Richard Cooper. Richard, do you have some ideas about have the no discussion? <coughs> but you have wisdom, I, we know, so please show your wisdom. On the uh, gender issue, I'll start out with that. I have uh, <coughs> two teenagers. Uh, both are highly sensitive to the climate change issue, and uh, the son no less than the daughter. <laughs> so at this generation, there's the a, 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 and a small, very small sample. <laughs> I don't notice any difference between the two. Um, so as an American uh, on the panel, I should say, uh, because uh, having sat through the plenaries yesterday and today, um, uh, non-Americans should not confuse the U.S. government position under Mr. Trump with the American position. Mm. It's very important to understand that people uh, implicitly, more than explicitly, assumed that uh, Trump leads the United States, and um, he does titularly, um, but he does not on attitudes toward many issues, and this is one of them. Um, it happens that uh, two weeks after Trump announced the U.S potential future withdrawal from the Paris Agreement, the Conference of Mayors met um, uh, representing 1,400 American cities. Um, and they voted overwhelmingly to repudiate Trump on this particular issue, uh, uh, Republicans as well as Democrats across the country. Now, it has to be said at once that not all cities have climate change policies. Uh, the city that I come from does, but uh, not all cities do. Um, but, uh, uh, and the polls continue to show uh, climate change is uh, uh, not the most salient issue, but one of them uh, in the uh, attitudes of Americans. Um, the employer I work for which is Harvard University, has a very aggressive green policy, they call it. Uh, I don't like that term, actually, but it has stuck. And um, they're doing all kinds of things, including something that hasn't been <coughs> mentioned, uh, geothermal. We have a geothermal house. Uh, I have not uh, been given the uh, financial details on the building of the house, but they've drilled uh, way under earth and uh, uh, use the um, stabilization of temperature in the earth both for heating in the wintertime and cooling in the summertime. And uh, it's experimental and it's designed to show students what can be done. Um, uh, we'll see whether it works. Harvard has no lack of resources, so I'm not sure it would meet any investor standards uh, on that. So I'll, in my remarks, I will follow the uh, um, outline that uh, Fabius uh, uh, did this morning, uh, technology, finance, and policy. And um, the, on technology, what is amazing and would surprise anyone who has not looked at what's happened in the last 10 years how uh, quickly the cost of solar, both versions, uh, uh, so solar p photovoltaic and uh, concentrated solar, how quickly the cost has fallen compared with what it was a decade and certainly two decades ago, and how fast the uh, cost of uh, land-based wind has fallen. And uh, sea-based wind is falling, but it's still much above land-based wind. And um, the problem with solar and wind, of course, is storage. Uh, people talk about batteries. That's too narrow a way to think about it. There are many f forms of storage, mm -hmm. and batteries are only one of them. I know down the river at MIT, they're working hard on uh, batteries for uh, wind uh, uh, windmills, um, uh, which are 
not, they're, they're big uh, at the base of the uh, pylons. Uh, they're not for cars, uh, but they're alleged to be much more efficient than lead acid batteries and much less expensive than lithium batteries. Um, uh, but that's being worked on. But we should not forget uh, pumping of water as a storage thing. That doesn't work very well if you live near the desert where there's a lot of sun and a lot of water, but in some parts of the world it works very well. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, heat storage, of course, uh, concentrated solar uh, uses heat storage, uh, metals which are heated up to uh, five uh, to 700 degrees centigrade and that retains the heat through clouds and nighttime and so forth. Um, there is um, hydrogen, which you mentioned, which is a way to store, and uh, particularly we, if we're looking for motive fuels uh, and thinking ahead, uh, not to next year, but a decade or more, uh, this is a very good use of, uh, uh, to store, way to store um, uh, energy. And of course, there are um, uh, flywheels, uh, which again, come up from time to time. Any physicist will remind you of them, but somehow they've dropped out of the picture in uh, storage, but one can imagine flywheels when we have very efficient flywheels these days. So um, we should not just talk about batteries when it comes to storage, but look at the whole, whole range of uh, potential storage uh, vessels or vehicles. Um, finance. Um, and uh, various numbers have been floated about. I have not tested any of them, but uh, I find the numbers much too large, the ones that I see, uh, but that just may reflect my ignorance. But uh, this is a really, really good time to float securities. Interest rates in Europe are basically negative outside of Italy. And, uh, and uh, in Japan, they're negative uh, uh, for governments, for uh, high quality uh, private or international securities. They're positive, but very, very low. And we should uh, increase the capital of the international financial institutions, the World Bank, uh, ADB, uh, Inter-American Development Bank, and so forth, the EIB, in, uh, in Europe um, and have them, that, that this is not a strain on budgets. Um, it does imply a guarantee, uh, but uh, this is a very good time to float a lot of uh, fixed interest securities. And uh, according to um, economic analysis, there's a heavy demand around the world for uh, high quality fixed interest securities, much of which goes into U.S. Treasuries, uh, but it could go into other uh, 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 vehicles as well. So it's a very good time, and we should gin up the international financial institutions. I'm talking about the, not about the IMF, but, but about the, what we call banks, but they're not really banks, um, uh, to engage in this issue more than rhetorically. I know the World Bank has a big program in this uh, to study the issues and make recommendations. They do not do much lending uh, in it, in this area as such. So that could, and several, you mentioned sovereign wealth funds, which is an, another source of funding. And they're looking around for good yields on uh, secure uh, securities. So, I don't see at this um, moment in time a shortage of finance. It's a question of mobilizing the finance and providing to take care of some of the RIF government guarantees through uh, capital um, uh, promises of capital for these international institutions. Um, and uh, um, policy is the third category. And I was interested to mention, uh, to notice that Fabius mentioned carbon tax. 
I favored a carbon tax for 25 years. Uh, as this conference uh, illustrates, we, the world, have many objectives besides dealing with climate change. And one of them, in my view, is preserving the international trading system. I see a huge potential conflict between dealing with climate change on a national, or in the case of the EU uh, Union basis, and the trading system. Because the first thing that uh, firms, private firms and countries will want is protection uh, against competition from countries that do not have a comparable, whatever that means, um, climate change policy. And uh, once you can see those pressures in the United States, one can see them sometimes openly, much more covertly within Europe. Uh, it's not well noticed that when the, uh, the ETS, the European Trading System, issued permits, they weigh, uh, well, they issued them to nations, and the nations, in turn, issued way over issued them to the steel industry in Italy, to the ceramics and glass industry, and so forth. These are indirect subsidi subsidies to these industries. And uh, the way to get around that is to have a internationally agreed carbon tax. Um, the number, actual number, would be a negotiated one. I would start out at $40 and test the waters uh, to see how it would be. And uh, uh, with the proceeds of the tax to be held by each country levying the tax. So we don't get into the issue of international transfers, which raises a whole different can of worms. And countries could do anything they want with the tax, except undermine the purpose of it <laughs> through subsidies. And, um, and so, for example, it could be uh, neutral, revenue neutral. They could give it back to the public in various uh, ways. They could uh, redistribute it. They could hive off a certain portion for R&D on climate change. But that would be up to each country, actually, uh, what they did with the proceeds, in my view. My own view is that cap and trade, which is the favored um, device by environmentalists who sec accept the principle of uh, market in um, permits, um, cannot be made to work worldwide. Europe can make it work. The US, if we're, we're willing, could make it work. Uh, Canada can make it work. Uh, but it cannot be made to work worldwide uh, for reasons we won't go into. But uh, it's an absolute invitation to corruption. Uh, you're handing out permits which have real monetary value. And that's a total invitation to corruption around the world, and uh, any U.S. legislator who understood that uh, could not vote for it. Um, and uh, so I think, uh, and if you look at the models of uh, pricing of carbon through cap and trade, as in the ETS, uh, they all show that the big gains come from transfers between rich and poor countries, basically, efficient countries, countries that use energy efficiently, and the, those that do not use it efficiently. And um, so I uh, strongly favor, I, I'm interested that uh, Leila had mentioned them and uh, uh, this morning on the panel, they were mentioned, and cap and trade was not mentioned. I don't know whether that was inadvertent or whether I'm slowly, very slowly, winning the argument. <laughs> uh, yeah. And the final thing I want to say as a matter of uh, agreed policy, whether it's universally agreed is less important, um, but we should be building no new coal-fired power plants anywhere in the world. Uh, we have them. We have a tremendous amount of inertia in the system. We will be using coal for decades uh, because, as was pointed out today uh, earlier, uh, coal-fired power, power plant, uh, 40 years was mentioned, but with some renovation, 50 years or 60 years they can last. And we have a lot of them around. Um, China, 
<coughs> is backing out coal as rapidly as it can through many different channels, nuclear, LNG, solar, and so forth. <coughs> and, um, but because of air pollution and the harm to Chinese health, uh, they're building coal-fired power plants as part of BRI in other countries. That should be stopped, um, and they should build. Uh, I see, uh, in my own view, is that uh, in the end, we'll do solar, basically. The end means out several decades, uh, and I see natural gas as being the bridging fuel to solar. And uh, in particular, natural gas is a great substitute for coal in uh, uh, generating electricity as well as other uses, but uh, so I see natural gas as the natural, or you can call it biogas, uh, any kind of methane basically, <laughs> yeah, as a uh, natural bridging fuel uh, between where we are now and solar power where we need to get to eventually supplemented by some other things, but, uh, but that's decades away. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, for this cap and trade thing is interesting point. I, I talked to some Chinese people about that and China said, I mean, they are planning to have um, cap and trade in the six or seven provinces. Now they tried. The, but they, they now, now they are moving out of it. Well, Be moving out, you mean dropping it? Yeah, dropping it. Oh, Be I didn't know that. Dropping it because, because yeah. solar is getting so cheap. Yeah. And cheaper than coal, so no need to make any kind of incentives in China. Well, I've, I've looked at the pilot projects. Uh, they were remarkably non-transparent. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to find out what actually went on in each. So they started out with seven provinces, ended up with six, yes. and they declared it a success, but they did not were not able to demonstrate to any outsider that they were successful. And the uh, formulae for issuing the permits and so forth. Uh, so I'm glad to hear that they dropped it. Leila, do you have a comment on him about this tax or carbon price? No, I think we, are, we agree, right? I mean, I think we were agreeing all the way through. So uh, here again, I mean, uh, let's not make it complex and let's uh, agree on on, 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 uh, on, on, on the now, I mean, agree on a price is probably a big word, but at least have have some indications and uh, take the first steps here again to get back to the level playing fields between the different technologies. And uh, as I mentioned, I mean, in 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 mobility, the 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 the, the, the efforts to have all costing approaches are creating perverse effects, where uh, you actually favored existing. Uh, technologies and systems. So, at the end of the day, if we want to cost uh, carbon in a certain way, let, let's do it in an integrated way. And uh, and I think, but let's let's keep the scheme as as simple as possible. 